Her name means life-giving or mother of all who have life. I'm Tammy Becker. Welcome to our very first episode into the 52 weeks of women that we are going to study of the Bible. And today we're going to be talking all about Eve, right back to the very beginning in the first chapter of the Bible, Genesis. So, in the description, I have all the books that I'll be using, but we're going to start off today using the 52-week Women of the Bible by Jean E. Sosuerda. And then also in the description, when we get into the part of the, the questions, we'll be using the free printable provided by me. So you might want to take time to pause the video now and go to the description, grab that free micro journal Bibling printable, sticker printable, so that you can do that along with me when we get to that part later in the video and in the study. So grab all those links, get all your stuff ready as we get going. If you need to pause, go ahead and do that now. So we're talking about Eve in the very first episode here. Let's get right get right into the lesson. And I've chose this because I wanted to study the women and study the women in the Bible. And this seemed like a good way to do it and be creative in God's word. And something that I think that is very easy is stickers. So we created that free micro journaling Bible page for you to journal in a little tiny micro Bible in as we go through all of these lessons together and then come up with some fun, creative ways to spend time with Jesus in the Bible. So let's get started today. So in the very first lesson, it talks about Eve's character. So I'm going to read through the lesson and then we're going to discuss the questions together in this Bible study as we journal with the page. And then we'll go to a view down on my page as we journal together. So it says that her character, she came into the world perfectly at peace with her God and with her husband, the only other person on the planet. She lived in paradise, possessing every pleasurable imaginable. She never knew the meaning of embarrassment, misunderstanding, hurt, estrangement, envy, bitterness, grief, or guilt until she listened to her enemy and began to doubt God. So the key scriptures that we're going to be studying today are Genesis 1, verses 26 through 31, and Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. So I'm going to go ahead and read those for you today. The man gave names to all the livestock, the birds of the air, and all the beasts of the field. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall down into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought to her the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat? from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that it is in the middle of the garden. You must not touch it or you will die. 
You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and all desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some of food for please because it was pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom. She took some of it and ate it. And also she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. And then the eyes of both of them were opened. And then he realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly. You will eat dust all the days of your life. So this is a lot to take in. So now what we're going to do is we're going to digest that down and take the questions that are in our book here. And we're going to journal together with our micro card. So if you need to pause the video, get your stuff together and I'll go over what I'm gonna use and let's get started looking down on the pages and discussing the questions in our book together. Okay, we're gonna get started with the downward view here and into our lesson. So I'm using the printables. This is the free printable that you should receive this week, the Micro Bible Journal Card. And we're going to be using Genesis chapter 2 verse 23. And I already had a set cut out. I just cut them out. I didn't fussy cut. I just cut them out. I didn't use my Cricut or anything. I'm using my little Micro Bible. I'll probably use some chalks, a sponge, in some washi tape I put over the verse so that when I do chalk, the verse pops out. Um, I went ahead and the dog started barking, so I had to stop the video, but I had already put down my micro card on the other side of my Bible, and that was uh, because there's, I wasn't going to use that page for anything else. Sometimes I do go ahead and do a tip in like these if I'm going to use both sides of the page but I just went ahead and just used the sticker as it was and so the verse is and Adam said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man and that's what we're working with today in our small bible so I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do yet in the bible but I'm really feeling like I'm going to be using these colors here are really what I'm liking. And on your card, you probably will notice you'll have some color guides here that you can pick out different. Uh, for instance, if I was doing my chalks, I could probably pick out which type of chalk so that would be a better chalk and probably this one for that maybe a blue one so you can kind of pick out by using your color guides there uh, so I'm probably I'm feeling like these here are probably going to be the ones I'm going to center around, I believe, is what I'm feeling. I'm not sure about these blue ones. Yep, I think I'm um, not hurry. They're just these here, I think, is what I'm going to do. And then, so as we journal together, I'll be going back and forth with our lesson a little bit. But the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to chalk my page. So when, we, when we're studying in our book, uh, in our Women of the Bible, so our first group of questions is Genesis. It, it says to, to read, which we've already done. 
uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 to 25. And so I kind of combined my answers for you, and I'll be giving you just summary answers. And with those, my uh, this is what I came up with. And I, I did some study, and I listened to Dr. J. Vernon McGee as well. And I... I, I believe that is God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And as God took that rib from Adam, he created Eve from the side of Adam. And I believe that was to be equal with him and to be along with him and to become one flesh. The other part of him, the other half of him, because... He was only half a man, and with Eve, it was his other half. And this is how they became one flesh. Not one of over the other, but equally one flesh. And God says that Eve is to respond to him. Not anywhere does it say obey him. So this was going to be a beautiful, and, a, and like a, like they were... A glorified light of covering them at this time in the garden, I believe, is what it is is how I would classify those questions in that first group of questions. But I do believe when we walk with our partner, I think so many times that things get taken out of context in the Bible, and we have to remember that they really were one flesh and we and some the way things are happening you know today these these days today is we're we're forgetting about that we're forgetting you know one always wants to be over one another and, and we're we're not partners and we're forgetting that we came into relationship together to love one another and care about one another so we need to go back to those kinds of things. So usually when I do chalks, I just kind of r run around my page, depending on what I'm, I'm feeling like I want to do. I'm going to put some green down here, kind of like if it was grass. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll maybe put some... You know, then I just kind of smush in the chalk to blend it in my page a little bit. Like I said, I am not a perfectionist. I do this because it's very simple. And then when you pull that up, you've got your scripture outline there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to talk about our next set of questions as I journal here. And I think I'm going to... Go ahead and put in her tree here. Hands are getting all dirty. So that next set of questions, the next group of questions was Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 13. So that gave me a little more answer when I kind of grouped those all together. I got quite a bit of, of more of an answer with that. And it's it's why the temptation man man was created innocent so where did that serpent come from why you know we are not told where he came from he was just there and he he was a creature that satan used a lot of people think it is satan but and and he would do just that but so why did he approach the woman and not the man that's another great question. Well, woman was created last. So see, she got her information secondhand. She got her secondhand from man, which was was from Adam. So remember, Adam was told he could eat of everything in the garden, but of the tree of good and evil. So Adam passed that information over to Eve. So it was secondhand, handed down by a man. So if the serpent would have gone to Adam, Adam being told straight from the creator, it would have probably turned out different. So you see, the serpent knew exactly what he was doing. He cast that doubt 
on the word of God. He was able to wear her down and told her lies that she could become a God herself. And with this, he, he told her that she wouldn't die. And you know, Satan, the enemy, he still uses those same deceptive techniques today. He slips into our lives and we don't even recognize it at times, but being in the word of God and maintaining a relationship with our savior can certainly discern those times and help us to stay clear. So why did Eve, Eve even choose to eat the fruit? Well, the serpent, he really made it appeal to the mind, appealing and desirable. I mean, and it was good to look at, at the best, in best to eat. So this is an appeal that he makes and the appeal he still uses today to us to lead her and mankind totally astray. So this resulted in the fall of man. And before this, man did not have a conscience, but after the fall, we did. And then they discovered they were naked and they felt guilty and Eve knew it was wrong. And she came up with three reasons anyway for eating from the tree. And today we all tend to rationalize our own sins. And, and what sins do you rationalize with? I mean, put, put it in the comments so that we can pray for one another. Because now we see the ugly blame cycle appear. Adam blames Eve. Eve. Eve blames the serpent. Well, who of any of the three participants are to blame? How did you answer that question in your workbook? When we look at the curses of God and he, and he pronounces on each and God first curses the serpent, then Eve, and then finally Adam. Not one of the three was left out for any of them were to blame. And this is also the first prophecy of the Savior coming into the world. And I would suggest it as a great memory verse and topic of trivia. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. And I'll put it, um, I will put hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. He being the coming savior of the world, Jesus Christ. Powerful. So, so, so powerful. So as we, as we see, it's just, you know, that he's still using, he's still using his tricks today. Satan is, and he's going to continue to do that. No matter what we do, he's going to continue to use these tricks today and deceive us, try to ruin our lives, detour us from being in the Word of God. Let's see, I think I'll put that there. And keep us just trying to just ruin everything that we have going for us, as always. I think I'm going to bend that, actually. Make it come over into two pages. is fine. Kind of like those little stickers. And basically that's probably going to be it for my page. I'm sure you probably can do a lot better than me. I'm not that much of a stick uh, of a creative person, but I do love stickers. And then, okay, so let's go on into our next set of questions was question eight and nine. And um, in, in relating it to our readings, it's Genesis chapter three, verse 20 to 24. So fi fig leaves, oh, <laughs> fig leaves tells a lot in the story. And, and God did not like those fig leaves. So he gave them skins. Now this would have been from the animals and they would have been slain. So this could perhaps have been from the origin of sacrifice. Um, and there's four great points here that we can get from these fig leaves that we could learn. One is, is that we have adequate coverings to approach God. We, we come at, 
as sinners. So number two, fig leaves are unacceptable. Number three, but God provides covering. Number four, covering is obtained through the death of Jesus. So God sent them out of the garden at this point. And, but he still provided a way of life that was left open to man. It was just, wasn't the tree of life anymore. He kept that path open and he didn't walk amongst them anymore because of their choice to sin. So we see here that this is where the root of sin was. And then in our next group of summary questions in Genesis chapter four, verses one to two, we see the, the fruit of sin. And here Eve recognizes that God is the source of life. And as we see, the Bible talks about Cain and Abel. And we must come to realize that Eve probably had many more children, but these two sons were of such importance to bring mention into the word at this time. Because right in the beginning, their meanings have a very significant place in the Bible, as do numbers and parables. And we're going to find that out as you read and dive deep into the Bible. I mean, this is such a fascinating way to dive into the study of the women of the Bible. So see how simple that was? Super simple. And that's it for our lesson here. But in our faith pod group, if you want to join us, we continue our lessons throughout the week. We're going to learn all about the rest, uh, what we learn is we're going to dive deep into five areas of the women. And we're going to have these other beautiful page stickers that we do in there together. We're going to learn about on one day uh, the um, like, or her story, all about Eve's story. We're going to learn about her life and times, her legacy in scripture, her promise, and her legacy in prayer. And we're going to be doing all of these pages come in our faith pod group. And you can join that for a whole $5 a month. It's pretty darn cheap. And you get another uh, four pages every single week. We have a faith card page. We have pocket pages. Uh, every week changes. We we always have a faith card page in there, faith decks card page, and but we also have a lot of fun stuff coming up. So you always get four pages of stickers along with our extended lessons, and a lot of bonuses. So check it out. The description is in, or the uh, link is in the description. I hope you had fun today and join back next week as we get to meet Sarah. Okay, I hope that this was a fun first lesson for you learning all about Eve. And next week, we are going to be diving into another character in the Bible. And that character, that woman, let's see here, let's look in our book, is going to be Sarah. So next week, it's going to be all about Sarah. So make sure and get everything ready for next week. And if you would like to join us over in our faith pod, grab the description or the link down in our description area there, and you can join us over in the faith pod club where you'll get extra five extra, uh, four extra pages a week, plus the extended lessons where we talk about five different things about each woman of the Bible over there. And you get the extra sticker pages along with us and you get part get to be part of the community over there as well and help out the ministry and see all the fun stuff that we have going on over there so anyway grab that link in the description and you don't have to you can just continue to do the free micro page as well and if you want to study the bible with us why don't you come on over to girl read your bible and we study the bible every week together we hold a zoom two times. We hold one at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time on Wednesdays and 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on Wednesdays. And come and join us. We'd love to have you over there as well. Don't forget to check us out on the website at youministries.com and see what this ministry is all about and see what I'm about. And I have a podcast as well.
and it's on Anchor or any of your favorite platforms, really. It's called Almighty God and Gospel Girl Podcast, and I would love for you to check that one out as well. One last thing, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell there and see me back here next week as we talk about Sarah. God bless. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.